Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I want to do a video tonight speaking about the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, as well as our future resurrection, and a little bit about what the second death is. And this is a you know holy week, and we, we celebrated uh, on Friday night, Good Friday, celebrating the fact that Christ was crucified for our sins, to forgive us through grace, to forgive mankind who did not deserve salvation, but our Creator Himself humbled Himself, came to earth, became man, and was crucified to take our place. And praise God that we are forgiven through His blood, and praise God that Jesus Christ's grave is empty. His is the only grave that's empty right now. He's the only one who's been resurrected. But we have that hope in the future because of what He did for us 2,000 years ago at Calvary. So this is going to be pretty scripture heavy. I'm going to get right into it. I want to start Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 and it says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus who was, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee there. There you shall see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and with great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. John chapter 20, verse 24 and 29 but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We believe through faith in Jesus Christ and receive a new birth. And that gives us salvation and hope for eternal life. We haven't seen him personally, but if you have been born again, you felt his presence through his Holy Spirit in your heart and life. Colossians 1.18 says Jesus is the firstborn of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, we'll be coming back to 1 Corinthians 15 later, but 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17 says, And if Christ be not raised, your faith 
is in vain, ye are yet in your sins. But, praise God, Jesus was raised from the dead. His grave is empty, and we have the hope of eternal life with Jesus Christ. After he was raised from the dead, he was on earth for another 40 days. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8 through 11 says, this is Jesus speaking to the apostles, he says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and, un and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him up out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up for you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Praise God. There's a promise right there that Jesus will return for us. I'm going to go to John chapter 14, verse 1. Love the Gospel of John. And John 4, chapter 14 is a great chapter. John chapter 14, verse 1. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. How do we qualify for one of those mansions? Well, first of all, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is the one and only Savior. You have to believe that He died on the cross to save you from your sin. Jesus said in John 14:6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John chapter 3, verse 3. After Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, Nicodemus, came to speak to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, Verily, verily, which, I, which means truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again, new spirit, through the Holy Spirit, to receive salvation. The way you're born again is you accept Jesus Christ's death for you personally. You repent of your sin, turn your life over to Him, and allow Him to make you a new creation. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, What's it going to be like when Jesus comes back? What is this promise to the church? Well, one of my favorite scriptures in all of the Bible is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And this is what's called the rapture of the church. This is when the church will be resurrected. Chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse Let's start at 15. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, start at verse 51. Actually, let's go back to verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, through which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus was the firstborn of the dead, we have this hope of this resurrection into eternal life. And those who are lucky enough to be alive when Jesus returns will never see death. They will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, into a incorruptible, immortal resurrection body that will never feel pain, never suffer, never grow tired, never grow old again, never get sick. Now, unfortunately, there is something called the second death. You either are saved or you are unsaved. Those are the two types of people on the planet throughout history. There are saved people and there are unsaved people. There are not many paths to God. There is one path to God. That is through our mediator, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Only through Him can you obtain eternal life. John 3.16 For God so loved the whole world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Unfortunately, many people are not going to accept that. Many people are going to choose to continue to live in their sin, and will not accept the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. We are saved through grace by faith, not of works, it's the gift of God. The Bible also says the wages of sin is death. If you die in your sin, you will be part of the second death. If you reject Jesus Christ, our Savior, you will be part of the second death. Revelation chapter 20 verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the, the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 
And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Again, God does not want anyone to end up there. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and all people would be saved. If you end up in hell, unfortunately, it was your choice. Jesus proved that he was God by coming to this earth, living a perfect, sinless life. While he was here, he performed countless miracles. He gathered together a few fishermen and a tax collector and absolutely changed the entire course of humanity. He is the one true God and the one true Savior. And He wants to save you. Revelation chapter 21 talks about eternity in heaven. And it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are faithful and true. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which again is the second death. <clears throat> Heaven is a free gift to anybody who wants salvation. Acts chapter 4, Verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So let's try to remember who Jesus Christ is. He is the Creator. He is the Word of God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He said, Before Abraham was, I, I am. He's eternal. And it's a mind-boggling thing to really consider that our God, our Creator, who knew that we were going to reject Him, created us anyway. And then as we continually live our lives not for Him, in sin, and reject Him, He still loves us. And He still wants us to be saved. And that he would come down here and suffer, and suffer a cruel death for us. And again, praise God, he was resurrected. And he's promised to come back again to get us. And all the signs that he told us would be here prior to his second coming are happening at an ever-escalating pace. You cannot watch the news and read the Bible and not see that the signs are here. 
I would encourage you, if you do not know for sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you make sure that it is as soon as you possibly can. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Revelation 22, the last chapter of the Bible, says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And again it says, And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. This book, the Bible, is his one and only true word. It is his testimony. It is 100% right, true and correct. And all the prophecies he has given us in this book will come to pass exactly as he said. Thank you, Jesus, for your death and resurrection. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the incredible experience of the new birth. And I just pray everyone watching this video search their hearts and make sure they're ready. All the signs are here. It's coming back soon. Keep looking up. God bless everyone.